Hey, so have you been extra productive today because Instagram went down? <laughs> Instagram and Facebook are down, you my friends. What is happening? Well, I wanted to come and talk to you about what is happening and kind of the trends that you're going to start seeing with social media and the conversations that we're going to start having because this outage could not have come at a worse time for Instagram and Facebook. Hey, I am Michelle Gifford and I help businesses and brands develop clear brand strategies and efficient marketing systems so that they can better grow the business they feel called to create. And today we're talking about the Facebook outage, what is happening. So before we get into like what is actually happening today, um, we need to go back just a few weeks um, and talk about some things that are happening to Facebook right now. Um, the first thing we need to know is this is like one of the worst outages Facebook has ever had. In 2018, it had a whole day where it went out. And in 2019, there was a, a couple, I think like an hour or two that it went out. And this has been going on for, it was this morning till, um, till this afternoon at least. It still could be going on. And um, so this is one of the longest ones. And we have to also recognize that not only is it longer than other ones, um, Facebook and Instagram have never had this many people before, right? Like every year they get more people. And so this is kind of a big deal. Another thing we need to establish is that Facebook owns Instagram and WhatsApp. So you're going to see all three of those apps affected by this outage. Now, no one has come out and said, this is what's, there we go. No one has come out and said, this is what's happening. This is why this down. Um, I have read that they said that DNS records are not pointing in the right way. And you also have to acknowledge that um, this isn't like one person's website's gone down. Like this is so much data that they're going to have to fix and get back up online. So I'm sure they have their best and their brightest doing it. So that is what's happening. We are, there have not been reports yet on the actual cause of this. And I'm sure they're working to get back up online, but this could not come at a worse time for Facebook. <laughs> And when I say Facebook, I mean Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp, because remember, they are all under the Facebook umbrella. Um, and the reason is, is that um, a couple weeks ago, the Wall Street Journal on their podcast, The Journal, released a four, now it's a six part series of um, like kind of like an expose on things that are happening on in Facebook um, as a business that we have never been privy to. And so what happened is there was a whistleblower who copied a bunch of documents from internal documents from Facebook and gave them to the Wall Street Journal. They went and did this um, podcast series. And yes, today um, there was a 60 minute um, interview with the actual whistle whistleblower. And she it dives deep into all of these bad things that are happening in Facebook that no one is talking about on the outside. And Facebook is saying they're doing these things, but it's not actually happening. So here, here's just a, like a brief summary of what those are. I have a podcast episode that I dive into the four things and what this means for your business. Um, but here we go. Number one is that Facebook has a white list. And so this is a list that they started to... Um, it basically what it is is there's it's a list of people who if whatever they post they're not going to be taken down because um because they're too famous they have too many followers and so taking them down would be a huge pr disaster and so they've created this list the whole the part of the problem is is that's dangerous right like if someone has all power to post whatever they want whenever that can be really dangerous and it has been there have been some instances where it's been terrible and, um, but externally, you know, Facebook saying everyone, like this is an equal opportunity app. Everyone has the same, um, same standards. Anyone can make it or break it here. And it just isn't always true. There are ways, there are people who are, you know, that are allowed to post whatever they want. And the other problem with the whitelist is that it's kind of huge and kind of out of control. Like there's not one centralized place where they're managing or like, even going through and making sure everything's okay. And Instagram, Facebook knows that this is a problem, but it's kind of too big and they haven't figured out how to completely address it. Um, the second thing is that Instagram is, I mean, Facebook and Instagram have been, have been doing some research about Instagram's effect on young women. 
and it's bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> and they have this all this internal research and they refuse to share it with anyone. And also um, externally to the public, they are saying that, uh, that Instagram is not hurting people, but we all know it is. I mean, like on a personal level, I know that you understand that if you go in with a body issue and all you follow is um, bodybuilders and people who work out for a living, that you could start feeling bad about yourself. So they have information and they're not sharing it. They have this research, they're not sharing it. Um, the third is that the app has been used for really dangerous things like human trafficking and Facebook hasn't done a ton about that. They are working on it. Um, the fourth thing is back in 2018, they introduced a new algorithm that um, everyone is saying is really one of the main reasons that our society now, this into 2021, is so ex people are so at odds with each other. And it's because of this algorithm that was introduced in 2018. In 2018, Facebook looked at its numbers and said that there, and noticed that there were the same amount of people who are using the app, but they weren't engaging with the content. And so they, they introduced this new algorithm, which um, rewards posts or like pushes posts out that, um, that get more engagement, likes, comments, shares and stuff. And the problem with that is really divisive posts get a lot of comments, a lot of angry comments, a lot of saves, a lot of shares. And so they introduced this algorithm and they recognized that this algorithm was really contributing to the anger on the app. And they chose to keep the algorithm because it was making them more money. And so that's a big deal and kind of terrible. And the other thing they talk about is they are, they were pushing to attract younger users and, um, and that's not great either. So those are the main issues facing Instagram. I mean, Facebook and Instagram are facing right now. And, um, it actually has started a really great conversation and one that we've never had before about what place does social media have in our society? Because we cannot say that it did not affect elections. It did not affect like it doesn't affect our day to day. It doesn't affect how we feel about other people. It totally does. And so now we're having this conversation of who is responsible for this, who is responsible. Um, and if you know certain things are happening, Facebook, and you're not doing anything, should you be held responsible? And so they're kind of in a uh, mel of a hess, if you will. And they're, they got to figure this out. They've got to figure out. And we as a society have to figure this out as well. So I'm a business owner, I'm a brand strategist, I'm a marketing um, expert. And so what does this mean for you? Um, it's something that I've been saying for a very long time. And it's that if you are building your whole business on social media, you could very well get burned like you are today. This could be just a taste of it because you don't own Facebook, you don't own Instagram. Your followers, you don't own them. Like if Facebook and Instagram go away like they did today, you cannot have access to them. They, they are Facebook followers that they just follow you on the app. And so it makes it increasingly important to get a way, to find a way to contact and get um, in front of your audience and in ways that you own. So one of those ways are email lists, okay? I really love a good email list. <laughs> <laughs> because it allows you to have to be able to email your people anytime that you want to and um, and you own that no algorithm can take that away they can't ban you they can't take away your account like if you follow the rules you can have your email list um, another thing that I've been using quite regularly and I actually did text out my um, my t my SMS or text um, messaging I have a text messaging list that my followers are on and so when I, I text them today and said, hey, my your Instagram and Facebook, I said, it's it's not you, it's Instagram. <laughs> they, that's that's the problem, it's not, you're not doing something wrong, it's just that they are down right now. And that's another really great way. And a third way is to have a website, a place that you own where you can really be in charge of where you're sending people and um, and what you want them to do when they when they get to your website. And so we need to start building these businesses that are built to last, that are built to last longer and bigger than social media and that have staying power. That if something goes down with social media, that we have a place that is ours that people can go to. So 
we need to start thinking about that. So even if this is for a day um, and Instagram is back up online tomorrow and Facebook is ready to go, one th couple things I would think about. Number one is how can I um, start building my business so that it is um, that is safe and secure from algorithms and outages. Okay, I want us to think about that. If you need help with that, I have website templates, I have a blogging course, I have a Pinterest course, um, and I have an email course that you can start getting your email list up and going right now. Um, and then another thing I would do is I would think, what did I get done today? How much more productive, there we go, how much more productive was I today because I didn't have to check Instagram and Facebook? My guess is that you were a lot more productive, that you got a lot more done. And not I, I love Instagram, I love Facebook. I think they're some of the greatest tools out there for us as business, business owners, but we better make sure that they're, that we're using them they're as a tool in our tool belt and that they're not using us. Um, so that is my, that is what I need you to do. Okay, so if you want to get on um, my text, my text list so that you know what's going on, all the updates and you have communication from me, you can text um, Instagram to 951-309-7885. That's Instagram to 951-309-7885. I'll give you my Reels course so you can learn how to do Reels. Again, I love Instagram. I just think we need to use it the right way. So thanks for joining me. I will be updating you as things progress.